Uh, I operate Three Forks Farms in Warren, which is located between Sudbury and North Bay. And we currently are doing um, vegetable production. We do about three acres and we do, we're, we're in the artisanal chicken program through the Chicken Farmers of Ontario. And we do uh, 1,000 meat birds per year. And this year we're also adding another profit center um, for uh, seed saving and selling seeds. Well, we're selling uh, all our produce. Um, mostly, we're mostly doing direct retailing and we're selling at two farmers markets in Sudbury. We do a Thursday and a Saturday market. And in the winter, we do a farmers market indoors in North Bay. Uh, in addition to that, we do we have our CSA program that we started uh, this year, which we have in our first year about 20 shares, just over 20 shares. Next year, we're going to be up to hopefully around 40 shares. And we also sell to um, Eat Local Sudbury. They're really our only wholesale customer. We sell to the retail store, but also they operate a multi-farmer CSA program, which we uh, sell into. Um, the nice part with our our own CSA program is that we actually have our pickup location at our Thursday farmers market. So in terms of labor, it is really effective because that's one time we have to, we come to town and we do our farmers market, but then we set up a special tent behind our regular market tent. We call it our VIP booth, and that gets a lot of questions about oh, how do I become a VIP? We tell them about our CSA program, but also on the same day. We also drop off for Eat Local Sudbury for their multi-farmer CSA and the store. So it's a really effective use of time. Like if we're going to leave our farm, it's about an, almost just under an hour to Sudbury. So it's really effective. So in the future, um, we're doing a lot of direct marketing right now. And we've definitely not hit our threshold for the maximum that we can do. I think we're maybe still a few, way, few years away from hitting that threshold of how much we can sell directly. Although we do want to increase our wholesale um, because I think over time we may want to back off a little bit and maybe not do Saturday farmers markets, have two days off to ourselves and incorporating wholesale into that is gonna be um, a way to increase our sales and maybe have more time on farm because direct marketing does take a lot of time. Uh, and a lot of effort and a lot of emotional labor as well. Being at a farmer's market for three, four hours and it's like a horse and pony show almost. You know, you're you're there, you're part of the, the reason people go is that they're buying directly from the farmer. So you kind of need to be there with a smile on even if you're not in a good mood, you still have to pretend to be in a good mood because that will definitely affect sales. And I find by the end of a market day, I am so tired of, talking to people that I go home and I just kind of like shut down like I'm ready to like just sit down not talk to anybody I just want to have a beer and be left alone for a little while and you know but it also it means that Saturday after market I go home and unload it's not a time that my friends are out doing things and they're hey why don't you come out and do that with us I'm too tired of being chatty with people all day that um, it's not something I'm looking forward to. So it would be nice as we move our farm towards doing more wholesale is that we'll have less of that sort of market time. That means we will have, I feel like I'll have more emotional energy to devote to uh, my friends and people that I love. Not that I don't love our customers, they're really great people. And I really do enjoy that time at market, but it is uh, exhausting in a completely different way than harvesting, you know, like 100 feet of potatoes by hand or something. Having worked at Eat Local Sudbury, a local food co-op in Sudbury, um, I found things that worked really well. Like for a producer, you need to be considerate of uh, what the retailer's needs are. And it should never be a dumping ground for bad produce. You need to be really proud of the produce that leaves your store because if you burn a retailer, you're burning a bridge that may not ever be rebuilt. Because often, sometimes these, pr these stores may have a lot of producers 
that are wanting to sell there. And if you burnt that bridge, there's no reason for maybe that retailer to go back to you. If you sent them radishes knowingly that are oversized in Woody, like you're not only hurting your own reputation, you're hurting the co-op because they may not be able to sell that or they'll have to have that awkward conversation with you that we can't buy, buy this. So it's to, I think to have a really great quality of produce and you have to have a really tight post harvest standards. Like you don't have to guess at what they're looking for. You can check like as a produce manager, I used to have long conversations with our producers on um, the expectations I had of their produce, largely the frequency I thought I could buy and sell. And sometimes you have to be okay with if the co-op isn't doing well and the sales are down a week because it was really hot or there was a snowstorm or something, you have to be okay with selling maybe a little less and not necessarily f pressing them too hard. Um, and if a co-op doesn't or a retailer doesn't want to buy from you right away and then um, going and telling other people that that retailer is no good, that really always comes back to the retailer. And guess what? When it's time to bring on new producers, the ones that were not very cooperative, are probably not your first people you're gonna call. You may call someone who keeps checking in to see how things are going and who has really good good reputation for, for post-harvest standards. Those are a couple um, key relationships to have with, the, with a produce manager is to get to, I think, get to know them and work with them, keep good lines of communication and talk about expectations. When I was a produce manager, samples, really did help and I it was not so much just in flavor to just bring a carrot that is like this is the best carrot that I've ever had you need to try it and that's great and the, it'll help the produce manager but then my next thing is what does it look like when it comes into the store because I want to know how retail ready it is for selling it in bulk or if your idea is to, for the store to sell it in bulk um, and sometimes bulk is maybe not the way the retailer wants so that's why having that conversation and showing your type of packaging, what your branding is, and saying how you can help promote the retailer as well. You know, as a, when I was produce manager, I loved the producers that I knew, like I, I had ordered pro, pro, produce off of them, but then I would see on Facebook, Instagram, and all those so, on social media that that produce was coming. So that farmer was also promoting their own sale promoting the sale of their product at a retail location, help the retail location sell more. If the retailer is selling more of your produce and those sales go up, that means you're going to sell more of your produce to that retailer. So there's really a benefit to, um, from the farmer side to promote that you are selling at a certain retail location. When I was produce manager and a new producer called me, like an over the phone conversation was not, one conversation was not going to lead to a long-term relationship. Usually a retailer may have want to send you information. They want to know more. So we used to send uh, at a local, we would send out uh, a package to any prospective producer for them to fill out and also had sort of included our post harvest standards. And I really love seeing when a producer, I clearly read them when in a follow-up conversation, they would say, so you like it like this. We typically do it like that. Is that acceptable? Not acceptable? You know, it shows that they have qualities definitely an, uh, important to them. And to fill out that paperwork um, is a good idea. And I think also setting up a meetup time being like, I would like to talk to you further in person about selling to your store. And that was really good because then I got to meet the person and get a sense of their organization and um, their level of like their business sense because it is a business agreement, a business relationship and someone who is completely disorganized is not typically a producer I would want to work with. Someone who's not sending you an invoice or an invoice that is always wrong when their accounts are always wrong when they send you stuff. You know, these are things that are as a produce manager, I wanted to know, get a sense of that, of that person from the, from the business side. So I think that when you're maybe approaching a, a retailer is to really consider, um, you know, that first call is not going to sell produce. So I think like setting up meetings are probably really important, filling out the paperwork that they want, 
follow-up emails and um, as maybe mentioned before, it was uh, samples of what your product looks like. If you say, oh, we sell sprouts. Well, typically you don't sell sprouts out of a bulk bin. I want to see, because really bad packaging means it's going to rot on the produce shelf because it's not attractive to the eye. So showing that further stuff and you're being more engaged in that process and you're starting to build that relationship and trust with a, with a, with a retailer. My favorite thing about farming is that whole process from start to like to heart to post harvest. Once it's packaged and sitting in your bin and ready to go to a market or to your CSA and it's all there and it's all stacked in your in your walk-in and it's really you can see the fruits of your labor and that it's a good quality product and it's ready to go, that feels really good when you see that just that nice produce ready to roll roll off the farm.